United Plant Savers is a nonprofit organization that's deeply committed to the conservation of native medicinal plants. And this is really where the vision came from to do the Future of Ginseng and Forest Botanical Symposium. We wanted to bring together a diversity of stakeholders that were engaged in the conservation of these medicinal plants so that we could together come up with a national conservation plan for ginseng and ginseng really leading the way for how we can protect these other forest botanicals. The theme of this symposium is how conservation, cultivation, and commerce are deeply interconnected. We cannot have commerce without conservation. All right, so $64,000 question, let's start right in. Uh, is ginseng declining? A lot of people that are concerned about the state of ginseng and other forest botanicals that grow with it. And I've been to a lot of conferences. This one is fairly unique in bringing together academicians alongside uh, government uh, workers, alongside the people that are actually doing the harvesting and the people that are making the medicine and the consumers that are buying the medicine. It was the first time all the parties kind of coalesced around some of these issues and, and got on the same page with things. This is a 300 year anniversary for the first exportation of wild ginseng from Boston Harbor to Guangzhou. But this is our national treasure because there's no other nation in the world have our resources like we have. We had to protect them. I always thought it was pretty cool that ginseng is the only plant we hunt. It's not like I'm gonna go out and look for some spodulia, it's like, I'm going to go hunt some ginseng. And I've been hunting ginseng since 1973. If I know somebody who's digging it out of season, I'm going to turn them in because they hurt my future as well as everybody that's involved in the whole scope. Whatever you dig, you leave a third. I said, it'll propagate itself. If you take everything, you're done. Um, the legal harvest of American ginseng roots is, is far too young. Um, plants are not even uh, producing viable offspring and replacing themselves until you know at least eight to twelve years. The people making regulation have no idea what I'm doing as a poacher. The poachers have no idea the regulations that are being made. I really hope that at the end of all of this we can spark a conversation. A long-term project to move away from wild harvesting, but if we can incentivize people with, uh, with reasonable prices and with a solid, stable market, um, we feel that there's a lot of potential to bring the woodland botanicals into cultivation and to have them stewarded um, on people's private lands. When we see some of these rural areas really need to know that there's things that maybe they could grow on their family's land and not just go sang hunting, or maybe they can use the leaf, or they can plant starts for others, you know. So I think that awareness is coming around. To promote the cultivation of at-risk plants, to me, it's just a win-win. It's gonna take the whole, from collector, intermediary dealers, brokerage houses, on up to the end users, all to collaborate to help the funding of getting botanicals into cultivation and long-term viability. I think there's a trust issue between us as, um, as the conservation community and the, and the industry. That's a really important piece of what we need to build. I sort of see it piggybacking on the food movement. I mean, I remember five years ago, I walked in the grocery store and this organic segment was, you know, 10 feet. Now you go and there's a whole corner of organic food. I see that happening in the supplement industry. People are supporting it. They want organic, they want clean, they want sustainable. Only the organic ginseng is really the old ginseng that helps the human body. So if I want a section to be organic, I'll put it in transition after a certain period of time. It's very hard to grow ginseng organic. Very hard. Yes. It's the same way when you receive theft. Not to say that I have root rot elsewhere, but, you know, anytime you're disturbing the soil, this is what's going to happen. One of the things that I would love to see happen is greater education on what American ginseng can actually be used for um, by herbalists here in this country. It is our herb. It is 
our tradition, but the uses of it have been lost. The incredible thing that happened at this conference was, I think, those connections. Those connections of the realities of the field and the realities of data gathering and bringing all of this incredible genius together and also seeing that we're all kind of doing the same work. There's no other organization that is driven in its mission to protect these medicinal plant populations so that they'll be available for future generations, not just for the health of the ecosystem and the health of our bodies, but also for the stewardship and continuation of um, having these plants be a part of our lives. Help us build the mission of medicinal plant conservation.